Hello, everyone. I work on a, one of the projects I work on is a team chat app called Braid. It's written in Clojure and Clojure Script. It's open source, and it's meant to be hackable. And one of the things that we want is to make it easy for people to contribute and work and make it work the way they want. Kind of like when you think about you know, Firefox and plugins being able to change how you work with the browser or some other applications, such as, um, you know, I think back in the days I worked with a lot of WordPress things or Drupal, it had, they had a rich plugin ecosystem that made it possible to extend and really do interesting things with those sorts of applications. And it's not something that we see a lot. I mean, you know, when you think of like Slack, sure you can have bots and integrations that just communicate via the, you know, being able to send messages, but they don't, they can't make like dramatic changes to the UI. And so what we want to be able to do is to have it so that you can kind of have like plugins and change not only like the messaging behavior, but completely change how things behave and be able to show UI or buttons or do whatever. So rather than just thinking of it as messaging, thinking of it as just like a workflow tool. And our first kind of real motivation for this came just like, you know, even if we were doing kind of slack things, we already got to a point where it had a lot of features and it would start to get a little complicated for newcomers to try to get a grasp on, you know, how everything works and how everything's fixed together. You know, libraries have it easier. If you have an open source library, it's, you know, probably less than a thousand lines of code, so a new person can kind of get around that in an afternoon, but with full applications, it's much harder and you just don't see a lot of them being open sourced and you don't see a lot of them having kind of free contributors. Usually people are paid to work on those. So we wanted to work on this. And when I thought about the problem, I kind of started realizing that, you know, when we built it, our app and a lot of the apps that I've seen other people work on, people tend to organize their systems into layers of kind of technology or functionality. So in our case, you know, this is not all of the layers, but you know, you have, you know, on the front end, you have the views, subscriptions, and events, because we're, we're using like Reframe. Um, on the server side, you might have an HTTP layer that handles events. We also have a WebSocket layer. Um, and you might have like a business logic layer that these things tie into, and that business logic layer might then do things with the database, might send emails, schedule jobs, whatever. So when you work on your project, you know, you work across these layers. You write some code, and you put it throughout the, um, in each of these layers, and when you work on another feature, you know, again, you write it across the layers, and so on and so forth. Now, if this is what it looked like after a bunch of features, that'd be probably okay, but what tends to happen is that features blur and responsibilities kind of get confusing, and your things kind of start more looking like this. And suddenly, you know, there have been situations where I'm like, okay, I need to do this one thing, and I, and I just add another subscription, but it turns out that somewhere in that list of 100 other subscriptions that we have there, there was something that already did exactly what we wanted. But it just becomes kind of tedious to start kind of remembering, grasping everything. And so I was thinking, okay, well what if, kind of instead of thinking about things in terms of these functionality layers, we turned to, to maybe be able to identify and split out features? because that would work out great, because then if I wanted to have someone contribute a new idea or a new feature, they could just add it independently and not um, enter this mash of madness. And so what if you know, we could group these different functionality across these layers for the features that they support? Because sometimes, sometimes it's impossible. Like there's, you know, I, the gray areas here I indicate are like, you know, this is the things of like very intertied complex things that rely on each other. And so some of those things it's hard to break apart, but certain things it is possible. And when we started going on this route, we realized, you know what, there's a lot of stuff in our applications that can be kind of ripped out completely on an independent layer. Especially when, you know, you think about pages or completely different parts of your applications, you know, they might not touch code paths that another page touches. Like you can probably split out things into separate kind of little bundles. And so our goal was to think, okay, can we do something that, you know, if we were to split this stuff out, instead of thinking about layers, what if we thought about things in terms of features? So we could group code that relies for a single feature together instead of in layers together in terms of features. And then still have maybe some supporting infrastructure to allow for all those features. 
And so that's what we started doing with Braid. Now, when we thought about this a bit more, we kind of, the, the goal was to have this idea of like a host, or like we, the, you know, the terminology was like, okay, some host, which is the system that wants to be extended, exposing some way of being extended, and then these plugins being able to extend those hosts. We had a bunch of requirements that we wanted these kind of systems to fulfill. Ideally, we didn't, we, what we really disliked with kind of the normal way of doing things was anytime we added a feature, we had to go into kind of the existing system and modify it. So this is kind of like trying to fulfill the object-oriented um, open-close principle where it's like open for modification, where like we can extend it in some way but without touching the original. Um, I'm gonna kind of run through these uh, because, you know, we're, it's, we're kind of, been here a while already today, but basically we had a whole bunch of things that we wanted to be able to do in terms of like making it clear what can be extended and making it clear that when a plugin, what is the plugin extending if you're writing the plugin code. Uh, we wanted to be able to, and this is kind of the trickier part, have it so that a given extension point can be extended in multiple times. An example of that could be, for example, being able to uh, register like multiple handlers for autocompleting in chat or for different emoji or for different um, uh, translating URLs into different embed windows underneath them. So like for Google Maps, it would show you a Google Map. For YouTube, it would show you a YouTube video. So a lot of things like uh, a lot of traditional approaches for doing this kind of like maybe dependency injection or version control didn't really fit because they didn't support this kind of multiple extension idea. And also we had this goal of like, we also wanted to support all of our existing workflows of hot code reload using the like fig wheel and all that kind of stuff. So in the ideal situation, you could turn on or turn off while you're working and in runtime, we don't have it working in runtime yet, like in production, but at least in development, be able to turn plugins on and off and not have to kind of completely uh, rebuild the state of the application. So we thought about this, we thought, you know, okay, you know, there are some concepts that are related to this problem. I mentioned inversion of control, dependency injection, aspect-oriented programming, object-oriented programming. If you kind of, you know, uh, blur your eyes a little, it's kind of like the expression problem with objects versus functional programming of like, do you have, you know, do you organize things in terms of verbs or in terms of nouns? Um, and this whole idea of like feature flags. But we want to kind of take feature flags to the extreme where we organize our code not, and um, in all together. And so here's kind of, you know, we thought about this and we started iterating, la, 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 la. And I'll kind of fast forward and show you what we've kind of ended up with. It's not, it's still, we're still kind of on a journey and we'll still probably keep making multiple changes on it as we keep working with it. But at least it's kind of, we have something working and we want to just to share it and just kind of, you know, tickle your brain to see if like, if something like this might be useful in your uh, applications. So our code used to all be pretty much just like lumped into core and into these layers, but now, our braid source code, we still have, you know, all of our kind of old core, but we started ripping out modules one by one. And some modules, so for example, the stars feature, which lets you go in and like star a thread and then you can look at all your starred threads, kind of like it with in email, that actually is now implemented in a single file that cr cross cuts all those concerns. Whereas search, is implemented in multiple files, but all organized under a certain single folder. And these are all CLJC files because they actually run partially either on the server or on the client, because that's one of the things we wanted to do, because any given plugin might want to change things on the server or on the client. And so each of these modules or plugins, you can think of as a micro application, because they do things that a normal application will do. They will um, need to have client side state, subscriptions and events, they need to send stuff over the wire to the server, put some state in the, the server side database, oops, all those things. Um, and, there, and in some cases, we are able to put them in single files that are like 100 lines of code and do all those things for a single feature rather than having them in 10 separate files combined with all the other kind of features. So briefly look through these. Our core now basically just runs our module system because uh, everything is implemented as a module. And an example of modules is just this giant list right now of all the modules that uh, are enabled. So this is why like in development you just like comment one of these out, hit save, and it picks up the difference and it just unloads that module. Um, in production, we don't have that working yet, but the goal is to be able to have allow users or, or like server, like administrators or users turn on 
plugins um, on, if they want them or not. Uh, if you, the API, in this case, um, every module can expose some functionality because modules can actually expose things to other modules if necessary. So core is one of those modules and it does currently most of the, um, it has most of the extension points. And right now what that consists of is just a giant list of functions. Um, and these are all the just like, this is a list of things that you're allowed to modify. These are like the hook points um, and everything else is no touch. Um, so pretty much all of the rest of core, which is hidden behind these three little dots, which is the majority of the project still, is not meant to be uh, worked on unless you're trying to dig around in the core. But if you're just working on a plugin, uh, you don't have to look at that. You just have to look at the API. And these are all, we attempt to like uh, comment these pretty well, check it, because this is like our public API. So we spec out every single argument. And what each of these actually then do is, and this is going into the implementation, pretty much all these functions then swap some atom in our system. Now, I am gonna quickly kind of do a caveat that the implementation we have is kind of stateful and nasty and disgusting, but the problem is inherently stateful if we wanna turn these things on and off, but we are kind of thinking about perhaps trying to make it more declarative, but work in progress. So in core, so that, that was kind of like what it looks like in terms of what you can consume, and the way that you, um, uh, part of an implementation can expose something is basically they just have this helper to declare and they wrap some atom with this helper and this puts it into some central registry so that we can unload it or reload it as necessary and also later work with documentation and generate doc strings and things like that. And so basically it's just an atom. You can set it to be with some initial value. You can spec it out. I'm not showing the example where you can spec it. Um, and then uh, you just do something with it. It's just an atom that can receive values from, be extended by some other parts of the system. From the point of view of a module, for example, this is part of the stars module, the starring module. Um, like I said, you have closure and closure script, and you just call into those functions that are exposed in the core API, um, or into other modules API functions. And you just pass some data, pretty much like most of these are pretty declarative, in the sense that you just pass them some data in, uh, to make them work. The whole thing is not very declarative, and so we could probably, in theory, eventually replace these to be um, kind of just like one large data structure. Although the tricky part is that some, like, it's possible to potentially register multiple of these, but whatever, we're, we're working on it. But basically, these call in, make things, and, um, and so far, we've extracted a whole bunch of functionality, stars, embeds, emoji, custom emoji, all this stuff, and so probably like half of our code is now out of core, and so it's worked really well. Uh, we identified a bunch of kind of common things, and now we basically have a layer of all these core things that you would be able to do in any application, and now we just have a bunch of functions that help you implement that. So it works, it's great. Right now it's not perfect and not idiomatic because you have all these atoms peppered throughout the code, but we're working on it, and we're really happy. Cool, that's it for me, thank you.